Hello, everybody. It is Zara Berry again, and we are at Cafe Balua in Sarasota, Florida, at the Filmmakers Lounge. It is so cool. This is where all the artists gather, and they talk about their movies, and they take a little break to just relax. They have great food here. The energy is awesome. I will say it is extremely hot, especially for New Yorkers like me, but it is amazing, and we're going to have some awesome chats with some filmmakers, so hope you enjoy. My name is Kasia Slavner, and I'm the director, editor, cinematographer behind uh, The Sunrise Storyteller, which is a feature-length documentary. Okay, The Sunrise Storyteller, that's a beautiful name. Um, tell us what The Sunrise Storyteller is about. So The Sunrise Storyteller is um, an episodic documentary that uh, covers the ways people are overcoming adversity within their communities in East Africa and Southeast Asia. Um, and I cover a variety of topics from um, personal struggles like cancer to global uh, global issues like human trafficking, yeah. education, and peace, um, all with my narrative um, going out as a teenager um, yeah. in the world, seeing these issues firsthand for the first time. And um, they're all kind of brought together by the theme of hope and resilience. Now, what inspired you to make a documentary like this? Um, well, when I was about 14, um, okay. I was sent with a local organization from Canada um, to the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. And everybody, all the attendees, um, about 8,000 of us, come with different organizations from all over the world, all working towards um, making progress on the issue of gender equality. Um, and I was hearing these very um, heartbreaking, but also really inspiring stories yeah. of the issues people were facing in their communities, but also the solutions they were finding. And um, that kind of inspired me to take my growing passion for film and photography and do something with it. I am here with producer Lisa Mazzotto. I pronounced that right, right? No, Mazzotto. Mazzotta. Lisa Mazzotta, the producer of the documentary River Blue. I'm going to work on my enunciation, guys, I promise. Now let's, let's, let's get to the interview. So tell me a little bit about your documentary. So River Blue is a featured documentary about okay. the manufacturing of clothing and how it's affecting water globally. So it's a, a, it was a three-year journey for us where we did go to China, Bangladesh, Indonesia, India, uh, where a lot of our clothing is made to yeah. sort of see what, the, what, the, what was happening over in those places. And um, as you can imagine, you know, things aren't happening in a, in a great way. A lot of the textile dyes and toxins are being released into the rivers, and then that's people's drinking water, yeah. bathing water, cooking water. So we're going, okay, how can we examine this and find solutions to this issue? Yeah. Interesting, because I think people think about, you know, labor and how their clothes are being made, and they think a lot about the conditions of the people making it, but they don't always think about the effect that it has on the environment. So I think shining a light on that is really, is really amazing. Um, what do you think, I mean, I know this is like the the great question, but what do you think some of the solutions are? Yeah, we tried to show some of uh, what we were finding. So there are companies that are taking steps in sustainable manufacturing. So implementing water filtration systems would be a huge thing yeah. because then even if they are using certain chemicals that would be bad, if you're if you're filtering those out, then you're going, okay, we don't have to worry so much yeah. about what's going into the water. But, um, you know, there's amazing new technology out there and not using chemicals. There's a, a campaign called Green peace detox campaign and they've asked all the major brands to sign on to this to not you to delete a certain amount of chemicals from their production by the year 2020 oh, wow. so so signing on to that and really implementing it is one way that that can be a solution to some of these issues also um, the company is really taking responsibility for these actions yeah. even though the factories aren't owned by them we are st the, the brands are still hiring them exactly. to, to produce everything yeah. there so we're going let's let's sort of take ownership over that and then as consumers we can start asking you know, our favorite brands, how yeah. our clothes are made. We can go, you know, where was that made? What what chemicals were used? Is there a water filtration system in there? I'd just like to know because I want to be part of something more sustainable for yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Mello, and I am the writer and director of Sunny Side Up. Uh, I'm Hunter Davis, and I'm the lead actor that plays Gregory in the film. I'm Samantha Creed, and I'm the lead actress that plays Emma Posey. Great. So um, tell me a little bit about what the movie is about and uh, what inspired you to create it. Uh, the film is about uh, social anxiety disorder and uh, dealing with that sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I was inspired because I sort of uh, deal with that on a semi-daily basis. Um, and I just wanted to uh, put something out there that maybe people can relate to and understand a different aspect of maybe what we all deal with. 
I, for one, am very, very excited about this because anybody who knows me knows that I have severe uh, social anxiety and all other kinds of fun uh, mental health problems. So I can't wait to see this. I think that it's so important to sort of shed light on the stigma that surrounds mental health issues. And also just, like you said, people, A, feel less alone, but also people who may not experience it help them to understand it. So I'm super excited for this one. And you guys are actors in the film. So tell me a little bit about your character, uh, your process. Well, I play uh, Gregory. He's the lead character. Basically, he's a, a young funeral home director, uh, which is an interesting job for someone with an intense social anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he gets a leave from work. Uh, for a, Basically, he gets a month off work, and he decides he's just going to spend an entire month in his apartment because he doesn't want to deal with the world. I know the feeling. Exactly. I think, which is, I think it's good because everyone yeah. can relate. Like, I just don't, I don't want to deal with anybody. Uh, and so... As he's kind of taking this month off, he realizes, like, it's not all it's cracked up to be. And uh, he ends up getting connection with the downstairs neighbor. And they sort of have kind of a kindred spirit together. And, uh, and it's kind of a quirky comedy, but also drama. And I would say it's a dramedy, yeah. but it's very honest about social anxiety. Uh, basically, there's an inner monologue that's really a third character that's a voice in his head throughout. Basically, it says throughout the film, like, why are you acting weird? Stop doing that. Everyone's looking at you. Oh, you're you're so strange. Well, the voices in the head are very real. Exactly. So, and it's kind of him going through this journey, learning to deal with that voice and really understand that he's not the only one that has issues as well. I play Emma Posey, and like you said, she's the quirky downstairs neighbor, and yeah. she has the same issues, similar issues, um, which we don't quite delve into because this is all his perspective. So. Yeah. She deals with it in a separate way. You know, she has her social anxiety, but she's a little more uh, forthcoming with her thoughts and uh, just unfiltered, which is really fun. Um, I think we got to put a lot of ourselves into this as well as, yeah, exploring the character and just honoring, like, the truthfulness behind social anxiety, which we all experience and we don't talk about, but, you know, we can. We're all feeling it all the time. Um, so... Tell me a little bit about your writing process. Are you a film writer, screenwriter? Like, is that something you do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we've uh, actually collaborated a bunch in the past. Yeah. And um, we had just finished up a project, and we were tossing around ideas for the next one. And around this time, my grandmother had passed, so I was sort of curious about the funeral process. And I had a, a funeral home uh, in New England that was kind enough to let me shadow them and learn that whole process, which was interesting and eye-opening. But uh, yeah, so we were talking about ideas on what to do next, and I felt that this was important at the time and uh, now. As far as wh what kind of reaction have you guys ha had from the movie? Uh, it's been extremely positive. Uh, I, I'm not sure necessarily what demographic this might be for, whatever. So I think that there's been all sorts of people, all ages, and everybody sort of responded really well and open to it. Uh, we've had a, a Q and A in our uh, uh, earlier screening where uh, there were there were audience members that said that they feel like this uh, on a daily basis, but there were other people that said they never really processed anything like that. Yeah. And so it sort of opened their mind and eyes to people that might deal with that, you know. And it, it's been great. I mean, yeah, I think you said. Uh uh, when we were talking about it earlier, that uh, people that may not think that someone is being very responsive or like, oh, they're just shy or they're not fun or, oh, they're a stick in the mud or they're rude, they don't realize that this person is dealing with a lot of stuff that's going on that has nothing to do with anyone else and they, they feel really uh, debilitated inside and they have to try to, you know, put on a bright smiling face but they're going through a lot so like Mike was saying we had somebody in the screen that was like wow I didn't realize like what, what that I may not even know about yeah. and then other people have said I feel like that all the time like yeah. I've never seen a film where that really like expresses that in such yeah. an honest and genuine way so I, I have a question actually for all of you um I find that when I write about mental health and stuff like that. I always feel like I'm super alone and I'm gonna put it out there and everyone's gonna be like, oh my God, you're so weird or whatever. And then everyone's like, oh my God, I'm going through the same thing. And it shocks me <laughs> that so many people deal with this. Have you guys felt that oh, way at all? Yeah, I think um, there's something in your mind that just tricks you into thinking that this experience is solely an individual experience. Yeah. 
and you forget that you know there's billions of people out there so yeah. there's a good percentage of us that are dealing with the same things and you know it's just there's um you know you, you think you have an original idea you put it out there and then you find out it's already made it's just like that yeah. it's like there's always someone else out there that's gonna connect with you you just gotta reach out i am here with ray and eddie from the veterans filmmaking academy and we're going to talk a little bit just about their movie and what the program is so tell me a little bit about the vfa uh, the VFA, it's a new program that the um, Sarasota Film Festival put together to allow veterans an opportunity to learn all about filmmaking. Oh, that's great. Okay, so, and is this its first year? This is its very first year. What kind of content, like what kind of film did you make? Well, we um, came up with an idea together. We had to come up with a film. We wanted to do something that's an, in a veteran's voice or a perspective, yeah. something unique about Sarasota County. And so we came up with the concept of the veterans court system. Interesting. Tell me a little bit about that system. Uh, well, it's a fairly new program that they, they introduced to the local area, and, and I work for a nonprofit okay. that um, we, we work for veterans, so it was just a good opportunity. Yeah. Localized veteran organization, localized you know veteran court, and local veterans yeah. making film. That's, that's fantastic. And do you like making film? Yeah, I'm hooked. I'm You're hooked. hooked. I want to get. I want to. I want to get a camera. Well, I, you know, I'll have to have a, my compadre. Of help course, me. of course. And what about you? Do you like making films? I do. We're already actually working on another project. That's awesome. What is it about? Can I ask, or is it no. top secret still? Okay. Well, we'll just keep an eye out for it next year. That's awesome. What is your favorite part about the the filmmaking process? Well, for this particular project, I would have to say, hands down, would be opportunity to work with other veterans on yeah. something that's sin meaningful to us. Yeah. And what about you? Yeah, I would say the same. It, it's working together as a group for one common goal. So there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. That's fantastic. Well, I'm very excited to see your movie. And uh, when is it screening? On Tuesday evening at 6.30. Oh, I will be there Tuesday evening, 6.30. That is April 4th, I believe, right? Yeah. Tuesday, April 4th at the Sarasota Opera House. We will be there, and I'm super excited. Thank you, guys. I think what you're doing is amazing. All right, guys, that concludes today's time in the Filmmaker's Lounge. Now we're going to go watch some actual movies, but we'll catch you back here tomorrow.